Now consider a third factor. Consider your quadcopter not only have to fly at the wind speed, not only have to carry a payload, but it also has to deliver, right? It also has to fly from one place to another, and your battery is limited. If you have to overcome higher wind speed, if you have to carry higher payload, you cannot fly at the same range as if you have no wind and you don't carry any payload. So, you get the statistic again and you figure out what's the distribution on how far you ha your quadcopter has to fly to make the delivery. Alright, then you get another statistics. And then, how do you evaluate if your quadcopter quad can deliver 99% of the time or not? Do you satisfy that criteria or not? You, you apply roughly the same method, but now you have a third variable to consider, right? Uh, of course, you can if you go towards this side of the classroom, uh, the, the approach taken by the right side of the classroom, you have a third variable. Yeah, now, yeah. right, now you have to take the cube root as opposed to the square root, and your design just becomes more and more conservative. At some point, one of the variables is going to make it very uh, impractical. impractical, right? Well, if you adopt the approach on the right hand side, what's the problem here? Now you have a three dimensional integral, that's right. You have a three dimensional integral over the payload, over wind speed, and over the range, right? Of course, you, again, you have to assume the payload and the range has to be independent, and the, both of them are independent to the wind speed. But you even can, then. You can break that down. Yeah, you can you can break down the joint PDF into the product of three independent oh, and then, PDF functions. And maybe at some point say, okay, well, I know the range at this payload is the speed. You you can make one a function of the other two potentially. Yeah, you you have to yeah you can make one the function of the other two right, but then you have to do you have to have a two dimensional array of experiments. Right, you have to set up. Okay, so for each payload, I have to carry it. I have to set up a certain wind speed, and I can. I have to see how far it can go before my battery runs out. Right, you you either do that experimentally or do that using a simulation. But then you have to, a two dimensional array of simulation or experiments you have to carry out. And then it's easy to imagine. I have a fourth uncertain factor, right? Maybe the temperature is a problem because the temperature affects air density and it affects how efficient your propeller is. Or something else becomes a factor, or maybe the amount of turbulence in the air, right? Or maybe the direction you have to go, which is correlated with the, the direction of the wind. And in Boston, there is usually a certain direction of wind that is more likely than the other. I mean, there are just uh, many, many different. Uh, uncertain variables to consider whenever you make a design. And the integration space just becomes higher and higher and higher. And soon you have a five dimensional space you have to integrate. And you have to make a grid of five dimensions if each dimension has 10 different choices of wind speeds. You have 10 to the 5, which is what? Uh, hundred thousand different uh, experiments to perform or simulations to perform easily gets out of hand right so what's the solution here yeah can you avoid the integration if you use a CDS can you avoid the integration if you use CDFs it's Like by definition, the integral of the PDF is the CDF. The one-dimensional integral of the of the a single 
PDF is a CDF. But then you have to, once you have this indicator function in, right, you, it stops being, you, you, can, you can only convert one of these PDFs into a CDF, and you still have to evaluate uh, the, all the other integrals with the indicator function in. All right. So I, I don't think there is a, the, the CDF can solve the problem if you have only a one dimensional integral, it no longer solves the problem if you have that many integrals. You can you can get rid of the indicator function and just change the bounds on the integral. Right. So okay. So that's a very good point. So here, I think in this example, um, in this example, what you can do is that this is actually is equal to zero to infinity, dWs. So because this integral is is uh, the indicator function is either zero or one, right? So you can basically convert it into from zero to the maximum payload the quadcopter can carry at that particular wind speed. So PL max WS, right? And uh, I can say the two PDFs and the PDFs. So the two PDF, uh, So this is a D. DPL, right? So I can convert it into this integral. And the inner one can be written as a CDF, right? It's actually the C, uh, sorry, I still have to have one of the PDFs outside. So it's the PD, uh, PDF of wind speed that cannot be eliminated times the CDF of payload at PL max of wind speed, right? Okay, so so the, the question of evaluating the indicator function has become evaluating the maximum payload. And you still have the PDF of the wind speed. Why, can, is it possible to have a joint CDF? Is it possible to have a joint CDF? So, Yes, but then the joint CDF has to be evaluated at what? A joint CDF would be a bivariate function, right? Mm -hmm. And the joint CDF, if you uh, if you use the joint CDF here, it has to be also. Uh, let's see. I, well, I don't think the joint CDF is going to be useful here. So, so the joint CDF basically tells you what's the area, uh, what's the probability within this rectangle. Yeah. But what you want to integrate is the area okay. to the left of this line, right? So, so basically you can use the joint CDF, but then the math actually becomes pretty tricky. Like you have to differentiate the joint CDF in one direction and then integrate it in, in another direction. So basically, you, you end up getting something very similar to this. Okay. Right, you kind of have to slice this triangle and integrate. All right, so, so the, the, the CDF helps eliminating one of the dimensions. So if you have a five-dimensional integral uh, using the CDF, it's going to reduce it to a four-dimensional integral. And you then have to basically evaluate evaluate the maximum function. All right.